Hey, I'm Jay Hagel with Oxstart Climbing. We're going to talk today a little bit about scrap plywood volumes. All right, so if you're building a wall or you've already got your wall built or any project really, you probably have some scrap three quarter inch plywood running around or even five eighths, whatever. Uh, these are really easy to make. Uh, they're just going to be a, some 45 angle cuts uh, across the wood, nothing crazy. We're not doing any weird geometry, no other degrees other than 45. It's pretty simple stuff. Um, and we're going to go through it, it'll be pretty simple. You can make a bunch of different volumes. You can make them bigger, small. I wouldn't go smaller than this, but you can go bigger for sure. Um, we're probably going to do some at a later point that have some different shapes to them. We'll do a box. We'll do some longer triangles. But just for getting a, a quick number of them on your 45 degree wall so you can use some more edges and whatnot, um, these are easy to pump out. So they're not really high quality. Uh, actually, just scrap plywood. So, you know, nothing's perfect on the inside. I got my tea nuts, I got my wood glue. I've sanded down the outside, put some grit on it, but they're not, they're, I wouldn't sell these, they're not high quality, uh, but they're perfect for building them at home and that's that's what we're gonna talk about. So, uh, if you're gonna get into this project, you're gonna need three quarter inch plywood at the minimum. You know, five eighths is okay, but three quarter inch ply is cheap, readily available, and most people have it laying around. If you don't, the sheets are cheap, you know, it's not bad. Uh, I wouldn't go buy a four by eight sheet just for plywood volumes, because uh, you're gonna make a ton of volumes out of that. I have to start small, um, unless you got another use of that plywood. So I do have some T-nuts in this. Um, and then I've got a bunch of inch and a half, inch and five eighths inch screws that are holding this all together. And then I do have some Gorilla Glue wood glue uh, for some added bonding. Uh, and then three T-nuts. Uh, tools for this, before you get going, I do like a table saw for this. You can do it with a circular saw, but my table saw is so much better for this and I'll do most of it on a table saw. Um, you're gonna want a way to sand it after it's all said and done. So if you've got a corner clamp, that's also cool for putting it together, but you don't need it. Um, I've got, you know, you're gonna need a drill, your normal drill for putting all that stuff together. Uh, a sanding block will sand it. It just takes longer. Uh, a rotary sander will be fine. I have got a angle grinder that I really clean it up quickly with, and then I'll go back over with my uh, rotary sander to, clean, to make it nice and smooth. Uh, and then I do recommend having a nice uh, a bit for doing this part right here, doing this screw into the wall. Um, you can countersink it, but countersinking it tends to be kind of a dangerous game I don't want to play. Uh, as in you're going to just like, it'll actually blow through the plywood, not because it's going to hurt you, but because it's it, it's hard to get it right. So they make drill bits that have got countersinks in them that you'll see later in this video, like eight bucks. For this kind of a deal, I think they're, they're golden. Uh, I would definitely look at pick one up. Um, these are going to be screw-on volumes, as you can see. Uh, I will make some bolt-ons for later on in the future, but for our home woody, screw-ons are the, the way to go. So we'll get going on this, and uh, hopefully this answers some questions and gets you started. All right, we're going to start on this volume. We're just doing a quick triangle, nothing crazy. We're going to start simple. Uh, we might get into something bigger than that in the future, but uh, I think 45-degree triangle volumes are kind of important if you've just got a 45 degree woody at home even if you just got 30 degree or something like that there's a lot of holds that are pretty well useless unless you've got a volume that can bring that hold back up to a, a usable angle you know uh, most crimps are pretty well useless on a on a 30 degree uh, decline so you can use your volumes to bring them back up volumes are easy to make uh, they're cheap to make there's a lot of resources out there to show you uh, some more complicated ones and maybe we'll get to that at some point but the gist of this is I got a bunch of square plywood over from uh, my bordering wall and uh, I need to make a couple volumes so we're gonna start uh, the resources I've got some three-quarter inch plywood nothing crazy doesn't need to be super high quality um, we're gonna do all this on a table saw as much as we can you can do it with a circular saw but uh, I, I've got my table saw I'm going to choose to use my table saw uh, right set all my angles and whatnot I've got some wood glue I've got my triangle um, I got inch and five eight screws. These might be a hair long. Inch and a half might be better. Maybe even inch and a quarter. Um, but uh, these will work. I'm okay with them. They're exterior screws. Uh, I'll be using a drill with a pilot bit. And then I've got my impact for actually putting the whole thing together. Uh, if you want T nuts in this, you need to have a couple T nuts. I've got a bag of a hundred uh, that I bought a couple weeks ago. I got it for like ten bucks on Amazon. So. I've got my first 45 degree angle cut. You can see it matches up with this triangle I've got. Um, also cut the 45 degree here. Most of this will be cut straight on. I'm sure my next cut will be straight. And, uh, and then after that, we'll keep that 45 degree angle so it sits against the wall nicely. So I'm gonna straighten up my blade here. I 
to drop it a little bit because it doesn't need to be nearly that tall. Want to make the most use of this width of plywood because this is really actually kind of a small triangle. Uh, honestly, this is not be a very big volume at all. Uh, really, it's just to get one or two crimps on for the, uh, the the bouldering wall. So keeping it small, you can go as big as you want to, but this one's going to be pretty small. So we're going to go. Biggest thing to remember with the table saw is not to be Tommy Caldwell. It's just not a good day. All right, so got a little bit left over that 45 degree. That's okay. I'm going to start the other end of the board. It's pretty simple. So that's how that's going to sit just like that. Um, which means this triangle is going to come up to here at a 45. So really... All right, so I had this set up originally with this registration mark here, but after getting it down on there and trying to get that measurement correct, uh, it's going to overshoot it a little bit. So instead of having this one blunt edge and another blunt end over here, I'm actually going to rotate it this way. And so I only have the one blunt edge. I'm not worried about a blunt edge here. Uh, I'd scrap plywood. You know, we could, if we wanted to cut it back a little bit more, we could have. Uh, it just would have made it for a really tiny hold. I'm just going to sand that, and it'll be, it'll be fine. I'm, I'm not worried about that at all. Um, but if we wanted to avoid that, we would need to cut it back about the width of, you know, about three-quarter inch on either one. And make for a really, I mean, everything would be this size or smaller. So I'm okay with the blunt edge, but I want to minimize it down to just one corner. So I've got this. i got my blade leveled up. I'm going to line up, pusher. I'm going to cut this thing. Now, the registration marks, get this right, we can see that this looks just like that, and that's fine. I'm perfectly okay with that. So we're going to go ahead and do the T-nuts now. So I want to mark here looks good for a T-nut. Um, there looks good for a T-nut, and I like up here for a T-nut. So I've got a 7 16 bit for drilling this with. I'm just going to punch a hole through real quick. Pushing too hard is what causes that. So I need to back out the pressure a little bit. You want it to look more like that. It's not bad. This is kind of rough. It sucks. I'll patch that if I want to. That's a little bit better. Not bad. Okay. Let's do T-nuts first. 
All right, there's a couple ways to put T-nuts in. The main way is to just set it in and then hammer them in. Uh, the other way is to impact them in. Um, I for, since I have these all laying flat, I'm just going to hammer them in. Uh, I'm not going to worry about it too much. So I'm going to set a little bit of glue on the T-nuts, and I'm going to go hammer these in off camera. All right, put a little dot of glue on each T-nut and hammered it in. But I really want to set them. I can see a little bit of a gap. I want to go ahead and set them with my uh, impact. So all I'm going to do is here is... So I'm using a hold so I have a bunch of surface. If I did just like washers, it would still impact into the wood and create some, uh, some indentations in the wood I don't want. But with this larger surface I'm using for the hold, I can avoid that. So all I'm doing is setting that uh, T-nut down in there. Like so. And make sure you're not pushing on this point, you're just loosening it up with a little pressure towards the back, so that way you don't drive that T-nut back out. Like so. Alright. So, we go ahead and get our registration marks lined up. So there's the first one. See these angles are not matching up perfectly, but I'm okay with that for the most part. Um, I just really want the outside edge. These can be close. I'm okay with that. So I want to put a couple of screw holes. I'm going to do my pilot real quick. It just needs to be within that first three quarter inch of the board. So I'm going to put one up near the top. Now I'm going to put another one down here. Logically, you would want to put it way down here, but because that screw actually is going to go through at this angle, you need to be aware. So I'm actually going to bump it up right about. Up. Normally, you would want to put it way down here, but I'm actually going to put it up here because if you put it down towards the bottom, it's going to stick out. So I want to put it up actually a little bit higher than that. So we're going to dump it right there. Okay. Registration mark back on. So, If I'm going to start making these on a regular basis, I need to get a uh, uh, an actual clamp for that. I'm, I'm just going to hit this soft wood real quick, a little bit, with the bit, just to indent it. You could countersink it, but this soft, this wood's pretty soft. So, and then I'm just going to set these in here, get the line poking through. Get a little bit of wood glue on this thing. And set them in. Cool. We got a little bit of an edge there, but that's all right. I'm going to sand it. It'll be okay. Obviously, if you're using a little bit higher quality of plywood, you would not be able to inset it like that. Um, but because I'm using like the cheapest plywood available, it's pretty soft wood. This is a scrap wood volume, not a uh, professional deal here.
All right, we've got a basic volume now. That looks pretty okay. Um, overall, happy with all that. Uh, cool. Well, I'm sand down this nub in here. We're going to get rid of all these rough edges. But really, because I put all this wood glue in here, I need to let this wood glue dry. It's going to swell up like that, and it's going to swell all over the place. I'm actually going to throw a little bit. And eh, now we'll leave that for now. Um, I'm going to get some wood filler and put it in here. I'm not too worried about the rest of this. Maybe there, but I'm going to get some wood filler for this. And then we'll let it sit overnight, and uh, we'll sand it. So uh, I had a strip of this, probably about that long, and I've got two volumes about this size out of it. I could have made these. I could have gotten rid of this corner by making this volume just a little bit smaller, but I really wanted to go for as much as I could, and I don't worry about this too much. So uh, I'm get some wood filler. In. All right. So I'm gonna go ahead and do some wood filler. You can see my the glue is already mostly dried. We'll sand that down, but that's the only glue I see on the exterior. I'm not worried about any glue on the interior uh, as long as it stays out of the threads for the T nuts. As long as it does that, I don't care at all about this. So. We'll sand that down later, but uh, we're actually going to go ahead and put some wood filler in. So I've got some DAP plastic wood, nothing crazy. Uh, this is actually all going to get painted later. I call, um, it's going to be a scrap wood volume, um, but I, I do like to have them painted. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to get a little bit of this wood filler on my putty knife. And again, I want to keep it out of the thread as much as possible, but it's also pretty easy to remove from the threads uh, if this gets in there. It's easier than the Gorilla Glue. So really I'm just trying to goop it in as much as I can into those, those gaps that I created when I drilled it out. And then once it's all gooped in, I'm gonna lay my blade on there at an angle and I'm gonna scrape it off. Just like that. Not just perfect. Goop it in on the other side, scrape it off. I don't care if it's bulged a little bit on top because I'm just going to sand it and uh, it'll knock out of there pretty easily so I'm not worried about that. I'm going to throw a little so bit of all dried, screen. that paste is all dried, the glue's fine, I'm all happy with that. Um, I'm going to go ahead and sand it, I'm going to do all my rough sanding with my angle grinder with my flap wheel on there, but I could do it all with one of these or even a block sander if I had to, maybe even a rasp if I was desperate. Um, I could just change the, the grit on this and do all the same stuff I'm going to do with this, but it's just a little bit faster. Um, I do have my finer grit sandpaper on here, and this is like, man, this may be 220. Uh, it's just, I don't, I'm not going to go super fine because I'm going to put a grit on this after I paint it. Um, but it'll just go through and do the surface a little bit nicer than, than what this will. So I'm going to knock the edges off with this guy. These corners, you don't want to leave them perfectly uh, sharp because they'll uh, they'll tear real easy. And they'll, they'll hit something and bump off and tear all the way back through or something. So you want to keep those, uh, you want to round them off a little bit. Um, I went ahead and rounded off this corner. I'm going to go over with my finer grit and uh, clean it all up. Got a couple of high spots right here I want to handle. Hit that with my angle grinder. bump out this, uh, this paste right here. Cool. All right. 
I'm gonna prime this guy and uh, add some grit and we'll paint it and he'll be done. All right, I got a little countersink bit. We're gonna go ahead and attach this this way. We're gonna put two holes on each side. And uh, more than likely my two-year-old is gonna help me. So I'm just gonna pick a little bit. I don't wanna go directly in at an angle because then that would have your screws coming in at that 45 degree angle. And I don't want that. I want those screws to be halfway uh, facing down, but they don't have to be perfect. So I'm gonna run it off the side here. This is a number six countersink bit. And then I want to go until that countersink is all the way into the wood. Like so. Yep, it's not through the wood, it actually came out right there, which is just fine. So then we'll sand this down. Good. I'm gonna sand these off real quick. Cool. All right. Some people can call this done. You can go ahead and screw it onto the wall however you want to right now. Um, but we're gonna go ahead and paint it. So uh, let's go ahead and do that. All right. Painting part of this. It all looks pretty good, but uh, what I've got some Kills Primer here, nothing crazy. Um, a little roller brush. That'll add a little bit of texture, but not a lot. For my actual texture, uh, this is optional, but I like to do it. Um, I've got some fine ballast from Hobby Lobby, like what you'd find in the a, a, a railroad car hobby section, you know? So I'm gonna go ahead and roll this out. The main thing to watch out for is not getting a ton of paint into the bolt holes. You know, the wood holes will be okay. You can re-drill them out if you need to. But uh, the main thing is this one, otherwise you'll have to replace a T-nut. So, um, I've also got some uh, a little sample of some flat exterior paint that I've gotten some blue that will paint over the top of the, the thing that's done priming. Um, the uh, I like the fine ballast a lot for going on here. Uh, I find that getting it on right after you prime it and then painting a couple layers over it is generally the best way to keep it on. Um, that seems to have worked out pretty well on both of the volumes I've done prior to this one. So. Okay. I'm just going to sprinkle some of this. I already spilled some out. I'm just going to sprinkle it on. Pretty liberally, actually. I'm gonna go let this dry and then we'll come back and we'll we'll paint the final coat. Alright. Uh, I'm gonna take this thing, it's all dried, I'm gonna brush off the excess uh, grit. Most of it's adhered pretty well, but anything that's like loose, I wanna go ahead and knock it off so it doesn't get caught in the roller. You don't want to brush super hard because you will knock it off. Um, but any of the loose stuff. Then I got this little, this is some PPG exterior uh, flat paint. That I'm going to go ahead and just roll this with.
there you are. That's a finished volume. Let that dry and then we can go screw that onto the wall and use it however we want to. So, 